What's up everybody, this is Cool Dude, and welcome back to another cool review. Today, we're going to be looking at King Kong vs. Godzilla. Nah, no, 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 not the one that you're probably thinking of. I'm thinking the original one from 1962. Yes, there was an original. Some of you, you know, the younger ones might be like, wait, there was an original? Yes, there was an original movie. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure there's quite a few people that already knew this, and that's why they were all hyped for Kong vs. Godzilla, but there are a few youngsters who watch Kong vs. Godzilla, they're like, wait, what? So... Yeah, there was an original from 1962 made by Toho, released in Japan, and of course, America eventually got their own release, um, I think later on 1963, which pitted King Kong vs. Godzilla, which, fun fact, for those of you who don't know, um, it was originally going to be King Kong vs. Frankenstein. Like, that's what it was called, King Kong vs. Frankenstein. Um, and it was going to be basically Dr. Frankenstein, like the Dr. Frankenstein that you, like we know from the classic movies, was going to create this giant monster made out of different animals to fight King Kong. But it was ultimately scrapped because I believe, if I remember correctly, it was the 30th anniversary at the time of Godzilla, and Toho just, you know, it, Godzilla was practically their star monster. So they replaced Frankenstein with Godzilla, and thus movie history was made with Godzilla vs. King Kong. So brief summary of the movie, which is very, very different from the new one, so let's go over this. Um, it, it all starts with this um, Japanese meeting, Japanese company, that finds this island called Skull Island. Oh wait, Faroe Island. Yeah, for some reason they changed the name of Skull Island to Faroe Island from the movie, which I guess I kind of get, because this is not the same King Kong from the original movie. That, and also he's probably he's dead, so I don't know how I would fight Godzilla. Anyway, details, details. Um, so, this guy, Mr. Taco, <laughs> really funny name, I like that name. Um, it's like Taco with a K, not with a C. So, Mr. Taco just, like, really wants King Kong to be brought from the island, um, because they're really interested in the berry juice that grows on that island, but he wants to bring King Kong to Japan to, you know, have him as their star mascot and whatever for his company, and give him more publicity, which, sure, <laughs> if you want to get more publicity for your company, just capture a giant ape. Works every time. So, they, you know, they reluctantly agree to go get it, but meanwhile, there's this iceberg that contains Godzilla, which a nuclear thing happens to run into, setting him free. So... <laughs> Great job, guys, on that one. So, Godzilla's running amok, and meanwhile, they're trying to bring King Kong from the island, from Faroe Island, and they eventually do, but he breaks free, naturally. Um, for, through some, you know, human interference, because it's always humans messing everything up. And the rest of the movie is pretty much King Kong and Godzilla rampaging through the city, where eventually, towards the end, they get to fighting. So, let's go over the pros of this movie. Um, the, uh, number one, I should say, this movie is very weird. Like, for those of you just... The first thing you gotta know about the original Godzilla movies, like, beyond, like, the first movie and even Godzilla Raids Again, it gets weird beyond this point. Godzilla just goes to some very weird places, alright? Um, but, I mean, there's some weird charm to it. Like, it's just, it's, it just embraces the madness of it, because you're basically watching a, a man in a lizard suit fight a man in a monkey suit. <laughs> it's like, it sounds, it's, it looks, it's, it's just as ridiculous as it sounds, and... Like, I just like that this movie just goes all in. Like, it doesn't really, you know, it takes itself as seriously as it can, which I gotta give props to. It's really cool. So, and that's pretty much all the Godzilla movies. Like, like most of the Godzilla movies from that point onwards, at least until, like, the 2000-era Godzilla, until, like, the American version, which we're not gonna talk about that god-awful movie with Matthew Broderick. Ugh, no. Um, but... But after that, from that point is Suitmation, which Suitmation is pretty much a guy in a rubber suit, like, acting and destroying buildings. Um, so, the pro number one of this movie is that it's just fun. Like, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Not, I mean, it's really just, it has a, it has a nonsensical charm to it. Like, because um, King Kong, like, you see him in Faroe Island, and he, there at one point he fights this giant octopus, which, fun fact about the giant octopus, like, they actually used four. It was a mixture of real octopuses, which they used four of them for the scene, and like four separate octopuses for different scenes, for segments of the scene. They used the rubber octopus, and they used animatronic octopus for like the tentacles when it's attacking humans. So that's pretty cool. I like how they did that. Kind of reminds me of how they did the original King Kong from you know the 1933 movie. Um, and the the fight scene towards the end is really fun. Like it's really good. Um, now I am a little mad that there's not a whole lot of King Kong vs. Godzilla fights in this movie, just full warning, like pretty much all of it is at the end, that's, only, that's the only spoiler I'm going to give away. Um, like they have a brief encounter towards the middle, but like it's very short and honestly pretty underwhelming, And but a lot of the fight is at the end, but it's really fun, like I like, I like it, it's really cool, it's 
goofy as all heck to look at, but it's just so funny and so cool to watch. I like it. Um, and definitely you get a lot of the monster stuff, though. Like, they're not fighting a whole lot, which, you know, it's a little, eh. It's a little disappointing there, but there is a lot of cool monster stuff. You get to see King Kong rampaging through Japan a little bit for the first time, which is pretty neat to see, even if it's not the same Kong as before. Uh, Godzilla still is going around all over the place, um, so it's, it's, it's cool to see them interact with each other. And I will say also the premise to put them against each other is pretty unique. I like it. Um, it's pretty weird and pretty random, but it's, it's neat, like, you know, because... King Kong in the original movie was supposed to be brought from America, too, so I guess it makes sense in this one, King Kong is also brought to America, but also ends up, or not, Japan, I should say, in this case, not America, but then he runs into Godzilla by coincidence, and then they end up fighting, so that's pretty, I like, I like that, it's not the same as, like, the reboot, for obvious reasons, um, but there are quite a few cons in this movie, but honestly, like, even with the cons, like, I'm, it's still, I think it's a really fun movie. Like, again, you gotta understand that the old Godzilla movies, they get pretty wacky, they get pretty wokey, they get pretty nonsensical. Um, so you gotta really buy into a lot of the madness to really fully enjoy this movie. Like, don't get into the nitty-gritty too much. But there are a few things in this movie that really, like, I don't know, for me, just, it still bugs me a lot. So let's get into them. Con number one is that King Kong is just not King Kong. Um, so for those of you who are, like, love the original King Kong, like, really wants to just see the original OG King Kong go up against the mighty Godzilla, you're probably gonna be really disappointed, because this King Kong is nothing like the original King Kong, both in skill set, both in mannerisms, and definitely in the look. Which, I'm not a huge fan of the redesign in this one. Like, I like... The size buff, which I think is much needed, because if we were going by the original, like, 18-inch King Kong, like, he would have gotten, like, squashed under Godzilla's feet, so. I understand why they did the size buff, but I'll just something about it looks so off, because King Kong, it's a good thing the original director, Marion C. Cooper, of the 1933, used stop motion and all that, and animatronics, because, boy, does King Kong not look good as a suit. Where I think Godzilla can look very convincing in certain shots with the suit, because, you know, he's supposed to be like a giant roaming dinosaur almost kind of thing, so I think it does work for him. With King Kong, it's like, it reminds me of, it reminds me of just, like, like those wacky videos on YouTube where people are dressed in animal suits, or even that one SpongeBob episode where that gorilla, guy in the gorilla suit comes out, and it's just very weird. I just, I, I'm not a fan. And also the close-ups on his face just look very off, and it just looks very... It it's just doesn't, it doesn't feel like King Kong to me. It's like, it's not the same King Kong, so... It's a little off-putting for me. Um, con number two is that, um, like I said, there's not a whole lot of actual Godzilla versus King Kong. There's not a whole lot of that in the movie. And, um, another thing, I just feel like, um, just, this is a more of a nitpick thing for me. A more, much, much more of a nitpick for me. But, um, I do not like, and this is a spoiler warning, so if you haven't seen the original, just skip forward a, quite a few bits. Uh, but God's, uh, King Kong actually beats Godzilla in this movie, which I'm like, F that. No way did King is King Kong gonna win. Which, go on, King Kong fans, Stan. I know you're out there. I know I've seen all your d goddamn comments and your reviews on YouTube. If you wanna freaking rap me, if you wanna call me stupid, if you wanna call me retarded, I don't give two shits. Because, I'm sorry, King Kong in no circumstances is gonna win against God freaking Zilla. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into an extensive rant because I just, I have to convince at least one Kong stand out there that that is just a stupid idea. Number one, Godzilla has armored skin. He can withstand multiple bullets as we see over and over again throughout the King Godzilla movies. And, you know, artillery doesn't stop him, nukes don't stop him, hell, he survived an atom bomb. Whereas King Kong, in almost every version, except for maybe the new one, but that's a different story, just dies instantly from freaking airplanes. Number two, it's just... Godzilla has atomic breath. He has just, he's pretty much a walking nuclear bomb. What does King Kong have? Nothing. He's just a giant ape. Cool. Whoopty freaking do. Kong number three. <laughs> Kong number three. Um, it's just, like, even with the size buff of King Kong, like, Godzilla has fought much tougher enemies before and after this one. Um, like, after King Kong vs. Godzilla, like, how the hell is God's King Kong supposed to beat that? 
Like, King Kong can barely beat up dinosaurs in his movies, and while well, Godzilla's toppling Rodan, and Gigan, and, you know, um, King Ghidorah, like, all these way, way stronger monsters, and yet somehow King Kong still wins this one. And also, another Kong, a Kong number four, I, I, why do I keep saying, like, I feel like I'm pronouncing it like Kong, as in Kong, for some reason, they're just very two similar words. Kong number four of this movie is the BS electricity stuff that they give him. So, um, a little another spoiler, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going a little bit too much spoilers in this, but I'm not giving away any major plot points except for the end. But in this movie, because it was supposed to originally be King Kong vs. Frankenstein, for whatever reason, they make Godzilla weak to electricity, which the first movie is like one of the first things Godzilla does is rampage through electricity, but okay, whatever. Um, but for some other reason, King Kong actually gains strength from electricity. Like, he starts biting on the power cord, and yet somehow he gets power from it. Which is so stupid, and on top of that, it's never explained at all in the movie, before and after that scene. It's never explained how he gets electricity. <laughs> My favorite part of the English dub, because I did watch the English dub, don't hate on me, alright? Um, I didn't have access to the Japanese sub version. Um, it was very hard to find for me, at least where I'm at. Um, there's one part where the English dubber is like, it's like, he gains strength from electricity, and the guy's like, uh-huh. And his face afterwards it pretty much sums up. He's just, Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, how how did that happen? Why? Why? Just why is it? Why? Why does he do that? Um, and besides that, that's all the cons of this movie for me. But even with all that said, with all that weird nonsense that really doesn't add up and really just is like very weird and nonsensical and just really doesn't work in this movie, I still recommend it. Like, I'm going to give this a three King Kong or Godzillas out of five. I still think it's a blast of a movie and um, the fight is just really cool. And it's, it's, it is nice to see King Kong, somewhat in quotations I'd say, versus Godzilla on like the screen for once. And you gotta appreciate what this movie is because without this movie, there is no Kong vs. Godzilla 2021. So give this movie props for that, all right? And this is also, a lot of history was made with the Godzilla movies in this. This was the first time that the monsters are in color, which, you know, before that, even Godzilla raids again, they were black and white. Um, two, this would where Godzilla get the famous blue atomic breath rate, which he has in almost every version. Um, and this is where we really got to see the Godzilla that we know and love nowadays, where he always fights another giant monster. Um, because before that, Godzilla raids again, yes, there was that one monster, Anguirus, I, I think his name is, but that was really just more like a minor plot hole, in, plot thread in the movie, not like the main focus. This is the first time where we saw Godzilla, like, fighting a monster, and that was pr the primary goal or objective, end focus which is a recurring thing throughout all the Godzilla movies and what he's most famous for. I mean, the 1954 one, like, it is famous for introducing Godzilla and, like, rampaging through the city is a very iconic thing in the movies, but definitely fighting um, other monsters is what made Godzilla, like, just the icon that he is today. So, just give movie props for that. But still, it is a very wonky mess. A lot of things just are very, goes very, either unexplained or just are just there for the sake of being there and like just moving the plot forward to see Godzilla vs. King Kong fight. A lot of very BS stuff is given to King Kong to balance it out and um, towards the end like and even with King Kong winning like Godzilla was still dominating the fight. Watch the fight again and to let me know like how the heck did King Kong win? Like Godzilla was still dominant throughout most of the fight even with King Kong getting his buffs and with electricity and all that stuff. But that's just me. Maybe uh, that's just me. Maybe I have to like watch it a few more times to get an idea. But just, I, in my opinion, like he's still like I don't know how he did. It. I don't know how he won. Um, and that's yeah. It's just it's a very it's a it's a solid movie. It's just a fun movie. Don't take it too seriously. If that's the one piece of advice I can give, if you're gonna watch this movie, do not take it seriously at all. Or I feel like Kong. First Godzilla 2021, it is really ridiculous, but it also is, at times, a very credible movie. Um, it has a lot of plot holes in it, too, but, like, I do feel like, for, compared to this one, it definitely tries to be a much more, like, an actual movie, like, seeing a serious battle between the two, somewhat, even though we know we're gonna get along in the end. Um, this one, it's definitely, like, it's it's it tries, but it's, like, failing pretty, pretty hard. But with that said, like, if you don't take it seriously, if you just... Take it as, alright, I want to see Godzilla rampaging, I want to see King Kong rampaging, and them fighting each other in the most ridiculous way, in that just charmful suit-v-suit suit way in the Godzilla movies. 
just this movie is going to really satisfy your tastes, as it did for me. So, it's a fun movie. Three Godzilla or Kongs out of five. Highly recommend it. And with that being said, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and let me know what you thought of Godzilla vs. King Kong 1962. If you've even watched it, because half of you might not have even seen this movie or even heard of it in your life. So maybe go watch it and then tell me what you thought of it. Or if you just don't care about it and you don't, you know, you haven't heard of it before, uh, just leave me a comment anyway. I'd like to read it and hear what you have to say. And until next time, guys, stay cool, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye, y'all.